Good evening. I'm Taisha Essex back with another great video. Thank you so much for subscribing and connecting with me on my other social media platforms. Also for connecting with me on my websites, TaishaEssex.com and Timonics.shop, where you can find all of your personal defense gear. Tonight, I have a special treat for you. One of my most favorite, 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 favorite <laughs> Instagram um, pages, uh, a wonderful sister here out of Chicago, and her name is Tammy Gibson, otherwise known as Sankofa Travel Her. She is an author, a travel historian, and she has traveled from the beautiful city of Chicago, Illinois, all the way to Africa, documenting our African presence around the world. So, Tonight, if y'all can go ahead and give me a help me in welcoming a wonderful sister here who has been just inspirational in my life. Although I just found her and you know her journey and things that she's doing just a few months ago, she's also had that drive to find out about our presence, our footprint, and our accomplishments, you know, wherever she went. So tonight I give you Sankofa Travel Her, Miss Tammy Gibson. How are you doing tonight? Hello. I'm so glad to be here, Taisha. Thank you very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate you. And can you tell everybody about yourself and about your journey and what, you, what you're doing? Okay. So um, my, I go by Sankofa Travel Her, and I've been a travel historian for over maybe 11 years. Um, so I travel all over the world locating African-American historical sites. It can be um, historical homes such as Frederick Douglass, um, W.B. Du Bois, Marian Anderson, um, W.E.B. Uh, e. Du Bois. Um, I go to plantations. Um, I slept in slave quarters uh, through the Slave Dwelling Project to raise awareness of the importance of these sacred grounds. I go to cemeteries, which I love going to, um, locating African um, and African-American uh, cemeteries. Uh, so I also go to schools to educate students about the importance of black history. So my mission is to raise the awareness and importance of African-American history because I always tell people, you know, our history is more than 28 days. And so it's important for us to educate um, ourselves, including our children, about the importance of our history and not just focus just in February. And also our history is more than Rosa Parks, it's more than Martin Luther King, and it's more than Harriet Tubman. So it's very, very important that we need to expound our knowledge because there are so many unsung heroes and sheroes out there that we need to talk about besides those three people. Um, so I love black history. I mean, um, I'm just a history nerd and I just love the richness of our culture and the achievements and struggles that we went through uh, and the people that contribute to the fabric of this country. And thank you so much for that, because I also had a feeling like there was more than, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman and Rosa Parks and Jesse Jackson, those who I was, you know, taught about in school. I do remember mm -hmm. we had a coloring assignment in first grade where we colored uh, the face and stuff like that of Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's it's very important for us to receive the to be reeducated. Speaking of Dr. Right. Carter, Carter G. Woodson, can you talk to us about how you got started with, you know, documenting documenting our history across America in your re-education? Okay, so basically, I'll go way back. Um, growing up, you know, Black history wasn't taught to me. It wasn't until I got to college, where I was. Uh, when I grew up, I was my family was the only was the second Black family in the neighborhood, and my classmates from um, elementary school to high school were is predominantly white. Um, when I went to college, um, that's when I got that exposure of being around but black people. So I remember we I would go on Friday nights to play cards or spades or dominoes. And around you know the table while people playing cards, you know, I'm hearing about uh, Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X and all these people I did not know they were talking about. And that's where you get the good conversations, you know, political things that's going on, on the table while you're playing playing games. So I made sure when I got back home, I mean, got back to my dorm, I would look up these people. So when I come back to the party next set on Friday, I would know what they're talking about. And so uh, a decade after that, I went back to school. I went to Chicago State University and got my degree in African American Studies. And it was such a, a great experience there because it was my first time having black teachers. 
Um, Chicago State is a P, uh, PBI. Um, it's not a HBCU, but I got that HBCU experience by being educated by the most amazing um, black uh, professors. And it wasn't until I took my first trip to Africa um, through the study abroad at Chicago State and the anticipation, because I always want to go back to Africa. I mean, I want to go to Africa, you know, and this was an opportunity of a lifetime to go there. And I just remember the anticipation and the nervousness and, you know, just so excited to get there that when I got there and I got out the plane, you know, it was just an amazing feeling because I'm feeling the African heat hitting me in the face, you know, and I'm looking at down at the ground and I'm like, okay, I can't believe I'm here. And when my foot touched the soil, it was just like the energy that just hit my body, you know, and when our tour guides, the tour guide said, welcome home, my brothers and sisters, that was it. That was it, you know, and I was so happy to be there. And even though they lost my luggage for two days, I didn't care. The devil was going to steal my joy. I would wear my clothes. If I wear the same clothes every day, I didn't care. I was in Africa. And when I got back home, that's what that's when that's when I figured out that's what I want to do. I want to travel the world because I view the world as a classroom and there's so much to see. And I want to, you know, I had thought about going back to get my uh, master's, but I'm like, I can learn so much just get in my car and just travel the world than sitting in a classroom. And 11 years later, I'm here and I, I love what I do. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's amazing when you said that you 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 got turned on to like Marcus Garvey and other greats in college. And when you said that, it reminded me of the John Singleton film, Higher Learning, where, mm -hmm. uh, what was, well, I call him, Malik. was his name Malik? Because I get confused. I think, yeah, I think it was Malik. Omar yeah. S, you know, got his introduction to black history and being a black man through uh, Ice Cube, his character in, in the mm -hmm. movie. So I thought, wow, what a coincidence. Um, for everybody who joined us tonight, thank you so much. Shout out to my moderator, Black Voltron, FBA 2020, mm -hmm. joining us from Oakland, California. And oh, there is so the um, anniversary of um, the Black Panther Party. Absolutely, I was gonna have. I was gonna gonna save that for the the, in, the end of the the uh, the hour. But can you jump into that? Uh, also, everyone in the comments who's watching, if you want, drop your city and state and we'll have uh, Sister Sankofa travel her, you know, give you some places of, of, of interest. She has been, if you think I've been across the country, you've been across the world. Like I've only gotten, taken my passport to Canada. I want to get to Africa and do the true Sankofa. So can you talk to us? Uh, have you been to Oakland, California? And can you tell us about your ex experience there? Yes, actually, I was there for the 50th anniversary of the, the Black Panther Party. And uh, I met Kathleen Cleaver. And that was just the most amazing experience. I hold her, I held her hand and I didn't want to let it go. Um, but I did go to a few spots where Huey, Huey um, Newton was, um, was murdered. And um, I'm from Chicago. And this was um, where Fred Hampton, he was the chairman of Chicago. And speaking of that, they're raising money to save his house. Um, on the west side of Chicago. Um, so um, December 4th or December 5th was when um, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark um, were, were murdered. And so every year on that day, uh, people come to uh, the, the building, which is no longer a building now, but where he lived on the west side of Chicago, um, they have like a memorial ceremony and um, Fred Hampton Jr. is there and also um, his mother is there. So. I try to attend that every year, you know, to pay my respects and learn more about um, Fred Hampton through his through his son. Thank you so much for sharing that. I've got to get out to get back out to California. I'm really hesitant. Like I just left the PNW, the Pacific Northwest, and I have mm -hmm. no plans to go back any soon. But we mm -hmm. have so much history and our footprint is, is yeah. in uh, California. And I was actually in Seattle at that time. I was at the Northwest African American uh, Museum for the 50th anniversary of the Black Panther Party for Self Defense Seattle chapter. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's like I said. Oh my gosh, you're just like, like oh my gosh, goals. I love you so much. <laughs> uh, 
Like I said, everybody, we are here with Tammy Gibson, also known as Sankofa Travel Her. She is an author and travel historian who travels across the world documenting Black people and our history and our achievements, things that you will not find in history books, nor will you see them on TV. So mm -hmm. she has taken that out of like you can enjoy all of this and learn facts when you when you follow her on Instagram. So go ahead and head over to Sankofa Travel Her on mm -hmm. Instagram and you will learn something every day. You gain something of value. I gain something of value each time I see your post in my feed and I'm like, oh wow, this is great. And just the other day, we, we both have shared uh, an article, also our pictures and video from being down in Valdosta, Georgia, where the, um, the historic lynching marker for Mary Turner has been removed again because more savages have des destroyed it. Mm -hmm. So can you talk to us about the importance of preserving our history and also, you know, keeping these things, keeping these occurrences and these instances in current conversation, talk to and, us about that. Yeah, and see, and that's why I travel. So uh, when I travel, of course, I talk about you know educational stuff. But if I see something like the vandalism, you know, with statues, cemeteries, and the markers, just like with Mary Turner, I post that because I want people to see. A lot of people think you know Obama's president. There's no more racism. <sighs> Look at my you know my post. You know with um, Mary Turner. You know, I've been there a couple of times and, and I hope that they will put up a bulletproof mark uh, marker just like they did for Emmett Till. Because um, if you go to Mississippi, there's like a driving tour of Emmett Till um, that does a timeline until, you know, when he got murdered. And a few of his markers are shot up. I mean, you could, it's, I mean, I mean, the hole's about this big. Um, and so that's why I also do that, too, as far as posting like Fred Hampton. His, his headstone is riddled with bullets. You know, Jimmy Lee Jackson, um, who was um, who was shot during a peaceful protest for voting rights, his headstone is shut as uh, riddled with bullets. And so that's another reason when I post these, if someone lives in that city or in, in that neighborhood, you know, some people's like, you know what, I didn't know this happened. I'm gonna have to, you know, let a, you know let someone know um, at City Hall so we can try to correct this and get this right. And also with uh, cemeteries too. If I see cemeteries that, that I've been to that are been used as dumping grounds where you see garbage, you see mattresses, you see tires, you know, um, and you look at other ethnic, you know, cemeteries, the lawns are manicured and looking nice and neat, but our cemeteries don't get the funding that it should. Um, and they look, you know, completely uh, despaired. The, the grass is up to your kneecaps. A lot of the headstones and uh, are sunken all the way down to the ground or toppled. And so that's, you know, another reason why I do my travels too, to let people know that these things do happen and racism still do in this country. Thank you for the work that you do. And I just want to have like a, a call to action. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've been involved in a few different organizations where we constantly, it got on my nerves. I got tired of cleaning up the highway. I got tired of doing yeah. that. So let's do a call to action, us as black people. If you're a part of any, you know, letter organization or anyone and you're looking for those, those volunteer hours, let's go and preserve our, mm -hmm. our places of black history and yeah. our, our, our interests. These mm -hmm. are sacred grounds and we can't just rely on funding, funding, funding. If we want to protect it, we have to get out there, do the sweat, get up that morning, go out there with some trash bags, pick some stuff mm -hmm. up and, mm -hmm. and, get some some money together grassroots so thank you so so much for, for what you do and then if, they don't, if, if we don't do it no one else is going to do it absolutely and that 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 brings to mind this this past weekend i took a trip over to montgomery alabama where mm -hmm. i visited the memorial for peace and justice as, as well as the museum and i saw, saw saw the signs throughout where you know it's like this is a, a place of honor and respect please be mindful do not smoke do not vape and things like that luckily i did not see any of that there because i would have called it out and just been super duper upset but speaking of those two locations you were actually invited to the opening of them. So can mm -hmm. you tell us about your experience and also the historical importance of those two locations in Montgomery, Alabama? Yeah, so um, it was just an, a moving experience. I remember the night the night before, I couldn't go to sleep. 
you know, uh, because it was just the anticipation of, of going there. So I got there like maybe an hour before they opened, you know, because I wanted to be the first one there. So um, when people got inside uh, from a distance, I heard them, you know, talking and doing a ceremony and everything like that. And at, before I got there, I just started taking pictures because when I travel, I like to, you know, be by myself and especially going to a memorial such as that. You know, I didn't want to be around a lot of people. So I just wanted to take everything in and honor these 4,000 men, women, and children who were lynched. Um, so it was a very moving experience. Um, I know that Jesse Jackson Sr. was there. Alfred Woodard was there. B.B. Winans did a beautiful, um, beautiful song uh, to commemorate the opening of the um the memorial, but just seeing those names, you know, it was just, um, you know, it brought me to tears. And while I was there, I met two sisters and their grandfather, and I can't remember his name, um, their grandfather was lynched because he married an interracial couple. And for the uh, the descendants of the, uh, the their family members that were lynched, um, they had like special buttons. Uh, to recognize that their ancestors are, you know, their names are memorialized there. So it was just a, a very great experience. And I remember it started raining really hard, right? And I just thought it was our the ancestors crying, you know, of tears of joy that finally there's something here for people, you know, like us to honor them. And even though we don't know them, their names will be there for for a lifetime. And there was an experience because um, I, I went back three times I, that uh, I was there for four days and I, I felt like I was drawn by the ancestors to go back. So my second time that I went there, um, there was a dog. Right. And me and a couple of um, people, it was some black people, when we saw the, um, the statue, we all we didn't say we couldn't we didn't even uh, say anything. We just grabbed our hands and we formed a circle around the statue, right? And so we're we're um, someone was praying and we had our heads down. All of a sudden, there was a dog barking like a cat, you know, just like, a, like barking really loud. And the lady next to me, she was like, "I can't believe this is happening." She said, "I'm immediately thinking, you know, uh, what happened to me." you know, dogs being attacked, you know, during segregation, right? And so it was this girl that had this dog. The dog was lunging and barking and just messed up everybody's vibe, right? And so I was very upset. And so I had sent an email to the um, EJ, EJI and told them the situation. And they said they got did get some um, calls and they said that was a service dog. And I was like, okay, I've seen service dogs and I've never seen a service dog uh, bark and attack, you know, trying to attack people because she could not reframe the dog. That angered me a lot because a place like that, and it's been other places like the Katrina Memorial um, in Louisiana. Um, there's a sacred grounds where there are mausoleums of bodies of, of, of African-Americans whose families, whose, whose bodies were never claimed. And I walked in there and it was a guy there with a dog walking in a memorial, you know, and when the dog was doing his business, he didn't have anything to pick it up. And I stood there so he can see me. So he picked up with his hand. But if I wasn't there, he would have left, you know, left that there. And it's just the disrespect, you know, common sense. If you go anywhere and you have, a, you know, there's some places that you don't, just don't bring a dog. I mean, I'm sorry, you know. You just don't. And that's what some of the things that, you know, has happened to me um, when I go to sacred grounds and it someone come and just disrespect it. But um, going back to the uh, memorial, it was just a moving experience. And every time I go to Montgomery, the first stop I make before I do anything else is to go back to the memorial. Beautiful. Shout out to everybody who's here watching this great video. I'm here with Tammy Gibson, also known as Sankofa Travel Her, mm -hmm. author, travel historian of Black history across America. She has traveled from Chicago all the way to Africa, documenting mm -hmm. the Black achievements of us and also our, our great, our great scholars, our great mm -hmm. people who, you know, who I won't say gave their life, but yeah, gave their life, dedicated their life and 
did something monumental to get us to where we can sit here and talk about them, re remember their names, their accomplishments, their sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So shout out to everybody who's here. I asked a few minutes ago if, um, if you can put your city and state in the comments and we will read through a few of them uh, to get some, some places of interest that you should go visit of Black history that has also been, you know, trailblazed by Sankofa Travel Her. So while I'm looking through the comments, uh, sister, can you tell us about your new book and how we can get that? Yeah, so I am so happy. Um, my book, I have it right here. Um, Honoring the Legacy, A Guide of African American Statues and Monuments. And um, it's a list of over 500 African American statues and monuments in the United States. And what made me start this journey was um, I was doing what I usually do, travel, and I saw a statue. And then it dawned on me, and I was like, hmm, I wonder how many statue, African American statues are in the United States. So from then on, any place I travel to, city or state, country, I will always try to find a, a statue. While I was doing that, um, the murder of the Charleston Nine happened. And that pretty much sparked the conversation of Confederate, the, of the Confederate flag, right? And um, after that came to Charlottesville with the tiki torches and Jews will not replace us, blood and soil. And I remember I was scheduled to go to a conference about two weeks after that incident. And I was, uh, uh, you know, was thinking, are they going to cancel it? But they um, they kept the, the conference uh, going. Uh, it was still going to happen. So I remember early in the morning before one of my uh, meetings, I went to the Robert E. Lee statue. Um, when I got there, it was um, surrounded with gates and they had a big tarp covering the statue. And the statue is like maybe 26, 27 feet high, you know, and I just think of those type of uh, statues are symbols of race, of racism, um, dehumanization of African Americans and racial terror. And it just doesn't make sense to me how someone can celebrate these people um, in a war that they lost. Because I'm like, instead of waving the Confederate flag, you should be waving the white flag because you lost. Um, but that's why I want to do this book because um, with all the, the Confederate monuments being taken down, I wanted people to see the beauty of African American statues and um, and monuments, and um, I mean I think that statues not only do you take a photo, you know, look at the details of the statues. You know, sometimes there's some hidden messages or hidden um, hidden messages, hidden symbols within the statue. You know, look for the artist's name that. Um, design these statues and do your research and see what other public work uh, that they've done. So not only is statues a teaching tool, but also brings pride and beauty in the community. And so my book, I talk about my journey. Um, the second chapter, I talk about the history of Confederate monuments. Um, the third chapter, I talk about the importance of, of Black art, public art. And my um, next chapter, um, I've done interviews with some of the most amazing, talented African-American artists. And talking to them, they talk about their love of being an artist and um, Black art, but they also talk about the struggles of being a Black artist in a white male dominated arena um, and how they sometimes can't get commission work. And out of the 500 plus statues I've located in my book, only a hundred were designed by African Americans. So the 500 African American statues plus statues I've located, African American statues, only a hundred were designed by black artists. And to me, that's a problem. And doing my research and listening to this artist, when you have people in high positions that don't look like us, don't hire us, you know, it's more about the quantity how many statues you made instead of the quality of the statues. Because I've been to some statues, like with Martin Luther King, I'm like, okay, who the hell is this? I mean, this don't look like Martin Luther King. And so listening to them and interviewing them gave me such a deep appreciation of, of black art. And also the importance that 
pretty much all the um, art programs are no longer. I mean, I'm in Chicago and kids don't have a place where they can express themselves. And so that's why I want to do this book. So I still want to keep it as a guide, travel guide, but I want to add a couple of chapters just to um, educate people more about black art and black artists. And, you know, in your city, you know, go look for a, a statue, you know, because that person could have done, had, could have made, uh, could have done something in that, in that particular neighborhood. Um, there's some, a lot of unknown uh, uh, statues of un, unknown African Americans who've um, done a lot of community work within that um, city or in that state. Um, and so that's why I, I, I wrote the book and um, I've been getting good feedback on it. Um, a couple of the artists that I interviewed in the book, they absolutely love it. And they said it captured the essence of what they're talking about. And they hope that when people get this book, that they do have an appreciation of a black art. Just one second, I'm getting this up here. And I thank you so, so much for saying that because now that I'm older, I realized that I went to a school back in Cincinnati that was named after a black man. Like I was like, okay, I hate school. I don't want to go here, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm like, wow. So look for different books. Uh, I bought a book in Hawaii called African, the African-American presence in Hawaii. I'm like, wow, black people were out here, you know, cause I didn't sure. see any mm -hmm. around me, but you know, it's great to know we've been everywhere and, and we have done great things for this country. This country would not yeah. be what it is today without us. That's right. And we're not. So a sh uh, shout out to uh, Brother Kid Gravity Beyond. Uh, his question, uh, his, his city and state is Brooklyn, New York. Uh, are there any places of African-American importance in Brooklyn, New York that he can, can take his family to? Oh my God, there is so many. You know, when people ask me that. Yeah, it's like, like, it's so big. <laughs> yeah, so if you like send me an email because that's yeah. what I love. I love when people send me an email and they say, Tammy, you know, I'm going to Alabama. I'm going to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Can you send me something so I can um, take my family? And yeah. I just get excited. So if there's anything in uh, the city or anything, you're going out of town, you know, you're going on vacation or a family reunion, you know, seek out at least a, a, a museum, pertain, anything pertaining to black history, a one day event with the family. But if it's something that you want to look, because I have like a huge list on my computer yeah. of just, there may be some that are known, but there's some little, you know, mom and pop um, museums. A lot of people are doing museums in their home. Mm -hmm. Use the home as museums. So um, if you have anything that you want me to look for, just send me an email and I could definitely send it to you. And when you when you say that, when I went through uh, Louisville, Kentucky, like, of course, you know, it's known for you know, now, you know, I went to um, uh, Muhammad Ali's childhood home, the pink house. And the, the, the neighbors around it, they're like, yeah, I watched him grow up or, you know, I knew of him as I was coming up. It's just I met his brother. Really? Yeah. The day I did the tour, his brother was there. And that was like awesome. I mean, that was that was awesome. And that, that made my day because he just he comes every now and then, you know, to sign. He had a book to sign, you know, autograph of his book. Mm -hmm. And that was a great day for me because the day I was there, I met his brother. Oh, wow. And he talked about how much he misses his brother, mm -hmm. how much he loved him. And he started to cry. And I'm like, please don't cry. Please don't cry. Um, but he was just saying how much his brother was like, uh, how he looked up to him, you know, and how he missed him a lot. And speaking of, you know, the great, great elder Muhammad Ali, peace be upon him. He actually, his his funeral was the day that I graduated with my oh, undergrad. So okay. I'll never forget that. Each day I want to, I mean, each year when I look at that day, I'm like, wow, you know, I can't really celebrate. But, you know, he became an ancestor that day. And yeah. his daughter, Layla Ali, she is like my idol. I look up to her. She is my role model. I love her mm -hmm. so, 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 so much. Mm -hmm. um, also, too, I, I want to also, also mention, pick up Tammy Gibson's Sankofa Travel Hers book. It is a travel guide. And when you call it a travel guide, it brought to mind the Negro Motorist Green Book, you know? Yeah, it's a green book <laughs> of African-American statues and monuments. And so these are just some of the pages of statues and um, in the back is the list of over 500 plus locations where you can find statues and monuments. So yeah. I 
I can't hear you. I'm sorry about that. Your okay. book is going to sit right next to my copy of the Negro Motorist Green Book. So thank you so mm -hmm. much for making that connection. You yeah, no have something historic. Yeah, no problem. You have something totally historic. Um, also, I can you let everybody know where they can find you and uh, how they can contact you. And I'm going to type that in the chat and then uh, we will go to some more questions for you. Okay. Okay. So, um, you can find me on um, uh, my website is www.sankofa travel her sankofa s a n k o f a t r a v e l h e r on Facebook, um, on Instagram, and I'm on Twitter. And you can find my book if you want to purchase it. If you want an autograph copy, you can go to my website, click click on book, and you will definitely get an autograph copy. So my book, my um, shipment just came in today. So I'll be shipping out books um, first thing in the morning. So if you would like an autograph copy, I got I, this is like my fourth shipment because my books have been selling out. Oh, wow. So I'm happy about that. So I just ordered another batch. So I will be signing them tonight and then I will ship them out first thing tomorrow morning. All right. And, you know, I cannot uh, walk and chew bubble gum. So here we go. And that is SankofaTravelHer.com. Right. Got it. All right, I'm gonna put that right up here on the screen. So can you share with us, uh, one one of the questions I get when I'm traveling to you know places of African-American importance, all the time I'm by myself, but the most question I get or the most warning I get is be careful. Can you talk to us about how you prepare to go on your uh, travel journeys and mm -hmm. what precautions do you use? Or right. take? So now, you know, with the pandemic, it's been, it's been hard because I've been doing my last trip was to uh, Montgomery, Alabama. That was in January. And now with the COVID, I've just, I live in Illinois. So I only been doing road trips like in neighboring states. I have not, I'm supposed to be going to Atlanta next month. So I'm, I'm still thinking about if I'm going to fly or not. But when I do travel, you know, um, I'm always careful. You know, um, I make sure um, I get enough daylight. So I always check to see what time the sun rises and I always check what time the sun sets. So I make sure I get to my hotel an hour before it gets dark because I'm not familiar with, you know, where I'm at. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty much pretty much careful when I um, go to cemetery, especially cemeteries that are out in the boonies. You know, I always make sure I have my mace or, you know, and I'm always aware of my surroundings when I go th uh, when I go to certain places. So. I mean, I've been very, you know, been very, very careful um, on, on when I travel. So good to hear. And everybody knows when I'm when I'm traveling that I don't travel by myself. I got one main partner and about 10 to 20 best friends right behind it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> but also you you exercise, you know, situational awareness and you know, common sense, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I always, you know, make sure I'm careful and I always meet somebody. They was like, well, if you're, right. at, you're in South Carolina, you got a place to stay. So I have taken those opportunities, you know, and I make sure I don't stay in no base motel. You no, know, I stay in a nice hotel that has a lot of, you know, stores, malls, you know, movie theaters. So if I do stay someplace, I make sure there's a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, I, I gotta be careful with that too. I just don't sleep in any hotel, you know. Right. Hotel, you know, I have to laugh at the Bates Motel. I just watch uh, this this movie called Vacancy. I watch that every oh, year. Really? My favorite movie is Vacancy. <laughs> no outside hallways for me. Right. Can you, exactly. Can you tell us about a few of your favorite places that you travel to? That's just you know that's that stand out to you. That's like okay. Let's say you had you didn't have to wor worry about funds, any responsibilities. You can gas up tomorrow and go. Where would it be? Oh my God, that's so hard. Oh, or a, give us a couple of them. Well, you know what? I'm about to say it would have to be Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just the experience. I try to go to Africa every year. I was supposed to go to Ethiopia and um, Kenya this year. And so now that's being postponed to next year. Um, but I would have to say, I would say Africa. Um, mm hmm. hmm. Memphis. Memphis would be another place I would like to go. And Alabama. 
Actually, I'm going to at Memphis next week. I leave. I'm leaving Tuesday. I'll be gone. If I'm gonna go to Memphis and I'm gonna go to Arkansas. Okay. I'm gonna be there for a week, do a road trip there. So it's kind of hard to say what which place I like because I like going anywhere. Anywhere that's black, I love it, and I'm there. Well, question for you: um, Have you been to the Whitney Plantation? I know you you talked earlier that that you've actually slept in slave cabins, and yeah. the Whitney Plantation is on my list of places to go. Can you tell yeah. us about your experience there? Yeah, and you know what? A lot of these plantations, and I usually do storytelling. I've um, done reenactments as an enslaved um, laundress, but Whitney Plantation, I like it because it tells the truth. It doesn't sugarcoat. And anybody that wants to go to plantation, you need to contact me because you're going. sometimes you're gonna waste your money. I remember going to a plantation and they told me slaves were treated well. And I'm like, okay, you telling me slaves were treated well. Well, what do you mean by that? And they'll say, well, um, we kept the families together. We didn't sell them. Or they'll say um, they weren't whipped um, and they were allowed to go into, they were allowed to go visit family members at another plantation or they were able to go in town and purchase food or whatever. So that means that they were treated well. And to me, that was a problem. And a lot of them are scared to tell the truth, but you know, our ancestors built this country. And our ancestors have built the economics of this country and for that family. And when I go to a plantation, I don't want to hear that. And, you know, when I do um, storytelling, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm not here to sugarcoat. I'm not going to be all happy-go-lucky and everything was fine and nice and stuff like that. No, I'm going to tell the truth. And that's what some of these plantations do. But Whitney Plantation tells the truth. It tells everything. It doesn't sugarcoat anything. Another plantation I recommend going to is James Montpelier in Orange, Virginia. That's another plantation that embraces what happened um, on that site as, as far as the history, you know, of that plantation. Um, they also do um, archaeology programs. You know, I did a program where I um, was digging around a kitchen where the enslaved cooked. And as I was digging, I would find like animal teeth, animal bones. I found a fork. I found buttons and pins. And it was an amazing experience because the last person that touched these items were, were more than likely an enslaved person. And then if you go to plantations and you see bricks on the big house, you can see, see fingerprints. And you'd be like, are these fingerprints of an enslaved brick maker? You know, so I encourage, you know, some people say that, um, they don't want to go to plantations, but I do recommend going to because you can learn so much depending on the plantation you go to. And me having experience sleeping um, in, in a slave cabin, you know, I lay there either on a wooden floor or dirt floor. And I'm laying there, it's completely pitch dark. Sometimes my phone don't work because I can't get a signal. But you're laying there and you think, how did they live? A lifetime in bondage. How did they do it? You know, and you know, it was be times tears run down my face, you know. And for me, it's important for me as a travel historian to tell these stories. No, I don't know who these people are, but I feel it's my job and obligation to educate and tell people teach people about black history history. You know, so there's times I would I, I won't even go to sleep, you know, because I just think about and you hear the the wind coming from the cracks of the of the slave quarter, the, the slave cabins, you know, and you hear animals in the middle of the night. Um, but to me, it's a powerful experience. And it was one experience, a, a situation that happened where I was um, through the slave dwelling project. We were sitting around a campfire and the slave quarters were like right there. And in a the distance, there was a party going on. I think it was a reception. And this was like 11 o'clock midnight, right? And I heard the song by Katy Perry, Fireworks, right? And I'm sitting here around a campfire next to some slave quarters. And I'm thinking, if this wasn't a slave person hearing party going on in the big house, either they're trying to go to sleep because I got to get up in the, in the morning and toil in the fields, or they're sitting around a campfire thinking of ways to escape. But there's a party going on, and here they are enslaved. 
And to me, that was like a powerful, I mean, it just hit me just thinking about, you know, what our ancestors, you know, went through. Um, so I, I slept in, what, 15 slave quarters and every one is different. You know, I slept in the kitchen because every time I go to a plantation and we do an overnight stay, I'm like, okay, where were the, where the enslaved sleep? Um, I was in Washington, Washington D.C. There's a, a, a plantation, not like your plantation in the South, but it's, it's called the Octagon House. And that's where they had um, the enslaved um, were kept. They didn't live. They were kept there. And it was this room where the enslaved woman slept at the foot of the bed. And that's where I slept. I slept on the ground at the foot of the bed. And so it's a very moving experience. Uh, I recommend, I know some people can't, you know, may not feel comfortable doing that. Um, but there's people that do, you know, just to want to get that experience. But you will never know what it, what it is to be enslaved. But just to lay down there and just let my ancestors know that I'm here to tell their story and, and they will never be forgotten. And it's so important that you said that because my, well, actually my first time at a plantation, um, I was a police officer and one of the alarms went off at the Inview Plantation in Newport News, Virginia. And that was my first time I'm like, wow, there's plantations here. You know, I'm, I thought that like we were in the mid Atlantic. I didn't know that slavery was all the way up there. Little did I know at that time, my, my miseducated mind, and that was my first time in a, a, a plantation mm -hmm. big house. And last year I went through Brunswick, Georgia, where we, we lost our brother Ahmaud Arbery. And I mm -hmm. went to, it was called the, I think it's the Hoffle Bradfield Plantation. Mm -hmm. And I saw the advertisement on Facebook. It was advertised as a haunted plantation tour. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I was at a haunted plantation tour and it was like April. Mm -hmm. I was like, I expect to see that in October. So mm -hmm. I got a ticket and, and I went. When I got there and I was one of two black people that were there. Mm -hmm. And the, the brother that was there with me, I had invited him. And he talked about he he, he was actually from Georgia. He'd been to pl plenty of plantation tours. But that was my first time actually on a plantation tour. And I noticed that it was pretty much white people there celebrating the slave owner. He's addressing her, oh, she did such great things and miss this and miss that. She was a great, she was a fearless woman, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so I actually I started recording and I was like, I want to upload this to YouTube that I have it uh, uh, on, on my channel. Mm -hmm. And they actually asked us if we were descendants of the enslaved people there. And they actually had a story. They said, well, there, there, there was one man who stayed because he did not want to leave the plantation because he had it so good. And I'm like, Joker, what? And that's what I was like, wow, this is some bull. And now that I live here in Georgia, whenever I see the this the Spanish moss on the trees, I know that our 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 ancestors had to use that to stuff their pillows and their mattresses. Whenever I see oyster shells, you know, they they use that in building the foundations. So mm -hmm. I'm like, if this is haunted, this is of all the black people y'all mistreated. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. So, it's it's and, their voices. That's ha that's haunting them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I realize, you know, instead of the family turn over that property to the to those who help make that property profitable, they'll just turn it over to the state of Georgia or the state of whoever mm -hmm. and sell tour tickets and, 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 and have a gift shop, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when I go to these plantations, you know, a lot of people go there for the beauty of the big house. You know, you see the manicure lawns, you see the white columns you go in, you see the grand piano, you see spiral stairwells, you know, and the oohs, the ooh, the oohs and the ahs or the chandeliers and stuff like that. I'm not there to see the beauty. I'm there to see the ugliness. And when I ask questions, the tour guide, they de deflect my questions or they'd be like, oh, I wish you'd just shut up, you know, leave, you know, but I have my, I have my pen and paper and I have my questions. How many were enslaved here? Do you know their names? Is there a, a, a slave cemetery? I ask all these questions every time I go to a plantation and they'd be like, ah, you know, um, we don't know, but we'll find out for you. You know, and the tour guy, the big house is a guided tour, but the, the slave quarters is usually sometimes a self-guided tour. So they're like, okay, well, the tour is over. So if you want to go to the slave quarters, it's right over there. Have a good day. You know, which is good because when I go to the slave courts, I want to be there by myself. You know, you'll see people walk by it, 
you know, I go in, I touch the walls, I touch the ground and I, you know, say a prayer or do a libation or something like that. But those are some of the experience I go to the plantation. But and these going to these plantations is not cheap. It's like twenty, twenty five dollars. And I'm not paying twenty five, twenty five dollars to, to hear sugar coated, a sugar coated story. I'm not. I'm not at all. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, Dedox has stated, when you come to Memphis, if you haven't already, please visit the Slave Haven Underground Museum. Have you been, been, there. been there already? Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> been there, done that. And I welcome anyone. If you have questions for our sister, Tammy Gibson, also known as Sankofa Travel, her author and travel historian. Like I said, she done been places, you know, <laughs> all over. This has been busy documenting our, our history. So uh, if you have, if, if anybody has any questions, please, please list those and, and uh, ask. So when, when someone is going to, or going on a plantation tour, what are some, some questions that, that are, what are some questions they should ask? What are some, you know, rituals, you know, like, can you tell someone how to properly go on a tour or when we go to these historic sites of, of prominent African-Americans, what are some things that we should keep in mind? What are some offerings we should bring or how should we, we, we pay respect to honor their legacy and life work? Well, I mean, as far as like going to a plantation, you know, um, you want to, you know, of course you want to respect, you know, the grounds and stuff and just have your questions read, you know, just have ask questions, you know, because if you don't say nothing, you know, uh, if you don't say anything pertaining to, you know, black history, they're not going to, they're not going to say it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just like with uh, Sally Hemings and, and Thomas Jefferson, you know, her room was turned into a men's bathroom back in the 1940s. Wow. And I think maybe a year or two ago, they turned her room, they turned it back into a room. But I remember going to that plantation and they really didn't talk about um, selling Hemings. When I went a couple years later, and it was a whole bunch of black folks. Oh, they said Sam, Sally Hemings 10,000 times. So I said, okay, so it's around a lot of black people. So they're going to throw her name, name up all the time. But when I went, it was like maybe one or two of us. They didn't uh, talk about it. So I would say do your research first mm -hmm. on where you're going to. And then um, ask questions, you know. And um, that's what I just say. Just, you know, have your questions ready and, and prepare to, you know, and, and write everything down. Take pictures. Mm -hmm. you know, and I say, just don't take pictures. Take pictures, um, not just of like the like when I take pictures of the slave quarters. I take every angle. You know, I take every angle under the. You know, if it's sitting on on um, bricks, I take pictures, and I, I'm very detailed when I take pictures. So when I go back and tell my stories, you have you know extra photos, you know, to talk about it. Thank you so much for that. And where can, can everybody connect with you and hear more of your stories and yeah, yeah. enjoy your travels and just learn? Yeah, so like I said, you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter, SankofaTravelHer.com. I'm posting something almost every single day. Every day I'm posting something. Um, and you know, you find black history facts and also throwing things about certain travels I've been to. Um, I have a couple of, you know, since I launched my book, <clears throat> I got a lot of podcast interviews coming up. So if you want to, you know, see me do some interviews, um, I may be doing um, next month, I'll be doing a um, Zoom on my book. Just have an open discussion about my book. I'm, I'm going to do that. And then I think in um, December, I'm going to do a Zoom on history at rest. I've been to over, well, let me see. I've been, I have visited 600 grave sites. And I might just do like, if you go to this uh, cemetery, these are some notable African-Americans that you'll find there. And then I'll have like, a, I'm gonna have, launch a YouTube channel up pretty soon too. So I'm kind of busy, I'm very busy, very busy. So good to hear. So everybody, please, 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 please place your order to get um, honoring 
Honoring the Legacy by Tammy Gibson, also known as Sankofa Travel Her. Make sure you pick up that book and we can join in on your, your uh, Zoom chat. I would love to be there. I'm going to be there. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to get my copy of, of your book. I'll be showing it off on, on social media. Mm -hmm. Everyone here this evening, please head over and follow her, connect with her. You have a sister here who is teaching out of all the stuff that, that she can do, that we can do on social media that is, you know, just destructive and a waste of time she's doing something so constructive like this this is amazing and i'm excited to see all of your future works your future travels and you know just things that you have coming up and would is there a possibility that you will have like meetups and things like that like like group travel i know you said that you have planned to go to africa shout out to our sister art kathy in the gambia uh, mm -hmm. do you have, have have anything as far as like like group travels or group meetups in, in the works or possibly in the future? Right, yeah, so once, you know, we're able to travel, I do post like, I'm gonna be here, anybody wanna meet me? Or if I'm going to sleep in a slave, uh, and I'll do a shout out to the Slave Dwelling Project, um, Joe McGill, he is the founder of the Slave Dwelling Project, and he has slept in over, he has slept in a hundred slave quarters. Uh, and so that's how I get, that's how I um, go to um, these sites and, and sleep in them because, you know, with him. So I'll post something like I'll be staying at a plantation in Virginia. If you'd like to meet up and be my guest, you know, come and, you know, join me. And so I do post things like that. So I would like to meet people. You know, um, that's one of the most important things I like doing is when I go travel, I meet so many people. Just got a text message from someone who's watching us. They, they asked, did you see the movie Antebellum? No, I haven't seen it. Okay. Yeah. That's one thing they asked if you saw the, the movie Antebellum and how close to that, you know, to the actual research and spot on uh, uh, enslaved accounts were they? So I haven't watched it either. I, I heard about it. I, I'll check it out. So yeah, I'm anything you want to leave us with tonight, anything I did not ask or get you to speak on, just, just something you want to leave us with uh, as we close out this hour. No, I would just say um, thank you so much for having me on my show. I just like educating. I do. I love educating so many people. If one person learns something, I did my job. Um, so I encourage you all um, to educate yourselves, but also ed educate our children because no one's going to teach our history but us. That's very important. And if there's anything um, that you want to know, about travels, um, please reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to send you everything, you know, um, for you to have a, a great travel, historical travel uh, when it pertains to black history. Um, so, you know, I love what I do. I love to travel. Um, like I said, I leave next week. I'm going to Memphis and I'm going to Arkansas uh, of the Elaine, I think it's called the Elaine Massacre. Um, that happened in 1908, I believe. But there's a big memorial there. I haven't been there yet, so I'm just going to take a road trip in Arkansas, and um, I will probably do a, a a blog about it, about my trip to Elaine, uh, Arkansas. So, um, thank you uh, for the opportunity. And if you guys, you know, follow me, you know, purchase my book. It's a great book. Uh, it's a, if you love Black history, if you love Black art, and you love to travel, then this book is for you. And thank you so much for that. You just taught me about the Elaine massacre. So I'm gonna definitely look into that because when I was traveling through Oklahoma City, I thought about Tulsa and I, I stopped mm -hmm. there. And mm -hmm. that's on the the next location for the Foundational Black American Conference. So mm -hmm. are you aware of the Foundational Black American Conference? Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's freaking that sheet. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, if if someone's watching, uh, we're we're gonna start tagging him in your uh, post because he's doing a documentary coming up on um, the the uh, enslaved African insurrections. Uh, th throughout the country. So I, mm -hmm. I believe that you definitely need to be a consultant with him. So mm -hmm. we're going to definitely keep plugging your, your name and tagging him in your post because he can definitely benefit fr from you. You know, because you said that because last year, um, one of my friends, she lives in Louisiana, they did a reenactment mm -hmm. of a, um, of a uh, resurrection or revolt. Mm -hmm. And it was powerful. It was very powerful to see to do the uh, the, the reenactments of that. So that mm -hmm. was that was that was powerful. 
I would love to participate in one. I spent the majority of my adult life in Virginia where they constantly had the Confederacy reenactments and things like that. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. Uh, I need to be out there. So if you can't put me on this, this should be something that, that we meet up and do and yeah. put, put our, our energy out there and be in the foot of, in, 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 in the footprints of our, of our ancestors, those who fought because they just said, we did not sit around docile singing hymns, yeah. waiting to, to be saved. We saved ourselves. Right. I have that book back there. We freed ourselves by, I think it's David Williams. Right. Yeah. And then also next year is the 100th, um, hundred years ago was the Tulsa massacre. Mm -hmm. So if you guys, you know, get on their website because um, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to, you know, the pandemic will be over. Um, next year will be 100 years of the Tulsa riot. Oh my gosh. And that's why the foundational black American conference is going to be in, 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 in Tulsa. So you definitely need to be there. Uh, everybody, please help us out. Get, get, get our sister Sankofa travel her in touch with Tariq and let's make this happen. You need to be there. Uh, yeah, I went to it for the, it was actually the first uh, year of it here in at Atlanta. I loved it. Had a great time connected with a lot of people who supported me. Some people in the, in, in the comments, you definitely have a family out here and we are here for you. So anything that you need, I'm, I'm always here. Also to um, the first three people who uh, email and get a, get a book, I will actually have her refund your money. That would be a gift from me. Okay. So the next th three people from this channel to place an order for honoring the legacy by our sister, Tammy Gibson, also known as Sankofa Tra Travel Her, your book will actually be free as a gift from me. Okay. I just want to say thank you so much for being with us tonight. Any, I, I just asked you for any last words, but any last, last words for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I mean this was a great show and like I said, I like educating anything that pertains to black history. And like I said, you all just follow me and um you learn something every day because it's Im important to me not only do I educate myself, but I want to educate everybody as well. I am here if you're ever uh I say I see you're coming close to, to uh Memphis, depending on the days, text me. I may uh drive up there and check you out because me, I'm always on the go. So let me right. I would drive, drive Where do you live? Um, I'm, I'm actually right outside of Atlanta, Georgia, like, like, like greater Atlanta. Well, I'll be in Atlanta next month. Oh, that's what's up. So yeah, you can, you, you, you're, you're so welcome here. Okay. You're welcome here. Yeah. I'll let you know the dates, but I'm, I'll be there next month. You have a sister here. So I just want to say thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. This is not our first and, and only. You are welcome back. Oh, no. we'll talk about some more stuff. I, I, you have a, a standing invitation for any, in, any upcoming historic days or topics. I'm contacting you first. You are welcome here. So make sure y'all head over and follow her on Instagram. Follow her on Facebook. Check out her website at SankofaTravelHer.com. And shout out to Brother Black Voltron, who's been helping me out and typing all that in for me. <laughs> Get your autograph copy. Mine is going to be shipped tomorrow. So have That's right. And uh, yeah, and your uh, YouTube channel by the same name. So I'm so excited to to, to see what you do. I'm here. If you, if you need somebody to get some B-roll footage or extra camera, I'm here for you. Okay. Y'all yeah, need some advice because I like that lighting that you have and stuff. So I definitely oh, need to get this. Too. Oh, you got this. Love mm -hmm. you so much. I love everybody here tonight. Thank you so much for your support and just continuously being here for us and just showing how great we are. I'm, I'm honored to call myself a black woman, a foundational black American woman. And thanks to your work is, is fueling me. Okay. So mm -hmm. everybody like subscribe, share also tag Tariq in this video and also send him her Instagram page because she needs to be a part of some stuff. Okay. Definitely mm -hmm. get, get, get our sister out there. Thank you again for watching. Shout out to everybody here tonight. And I will see you on the next video. Have a great night. Bye, everyone.